Welcome back to Echo Trade. It's Jeff Roth. Today we're talking about technical analysis versus fundamental analysis. So we're going to kind of give the definitions, but also how you can use both in conjunction to kind of get the fullest picture when you're building your portfolio and you're analyzing equities. So we have Bill Bradford and Shirley Louie from Garrison Bradford to fill us in and guide us through the discussion. So let's jump in. Bill, Shirley, it's good to see you both. How are you guys doing? Great. Nice you, yeah. 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 So, so I appreciate you guys being here. You know, wanted to kind of get your feedback, especially from you guys, because I know you guys utilize technical analysis and fundamental analysis in how you guys are kind of building the portfolio. So I would love to kind of hear how you guys, you know, utilize it in your portfolio. But first, if you guys can kind of just walk me through just, just a definition of terms, you know, kind of defining technical analysis versus fundamental analysis. And I guess, I guess we could start with you, Bill. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Good to see you. Um, yeah, let's just, from, from our standpoint, let's, let's define the terms up, up front. Um, fundamental analysis deals with the company. It, um, you know, it, it, it's business, it's, it's, uh, it's income statement, it's, it's uh, balance sheet, it, it, it's management. It's all very company specific. Technical analysis is about its stock. It's about the, the price of the stock, the movement of, of the stock, trends, um, volume of trading in the stock. It might, it might in, incorporate something about psychology um, related to um, investors' perceptions of the stock and so forth, but it's very stock specific. Um, so our, our investment strategy is very company specific. We're not, um, we don't think a lot about the economy. We don't think a lot about the stock market. We're not, we're not trying to decide whether to buy energy stocks because of what the price of oil is doing or, or bank stocks because of what interest rates are, are, are doing. We're, we're, what we're looking for are great compounding growth stocks. And what we want to do is hop on board and, and, and ride that, that growth through, you know, ups and downs in the economy, ups and downs in, in the stock market, um, ups and ups and downs in, in various, various industries. We want, you know, it's very specifically focused on individual companies and we use fundamental analysis to, to find those, those companies. Um, gotcha. And surely, surely in a moment, it's going to sort of walk, walk through that, that process. But then once we found um, the company, then, then technical analysis can, analysis can be a very valuable tool to help you come to, you know, decision-making points. What's a, what's a good, good price at which to buy. If you're going to sell the stock, you know, how do you time, how do you time the, 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 the sale? So, Charlie, you want to sort of start with uh, how do we find these these great companies? Oh, it's easy. I just pick a cab around Manhattan and find them. <laughs> 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 Jokes aside, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of um, paying attention to what's developing in various companies. And it's a lot of research, essentially, kicking tires of each company, understanding their business models, understanding the management style, understanding the, it, the, the marketplace. So we have synthesized these into three main points. One, what is the total addressable market for the company? Is the total addressable market growing? If it is not growing, are they eating the lunch of their competitors? Because then they can grow through market share, increase their market share. So that's number one. Number two, then do they have at least one competitive advantage? Because if you do not have any competitive advantage, how can you keep on selling your products? Your lunch will be eaten by your competitors. But if you have a good competitive advantage, like low cost, you're the lowest cost producer, such as China has as a country, they have attracted all these investments of manufacturing companies from all over the world. 
because they are able to manufacture and deliver the products. So, or you have a network effect. Why is um, Facebook now Meta so popular? It's a cash cow because they have this massive network effect. So these are all the examples of what we look for, competitive advantage. And that's all well and good, but if you do not have a good management team to synthesize all these wonderful forces together, and not only synthesize them, but has the ability to continue to grow, to compound their growth, and at the same time, reward their shareholders. Now, these three are very critical elements of our fundamental analysis. I would like Bill to expound on the valuation further. Well, okay, so 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 that's you know, those are the companies we're looking looking for. They've got a great business with a you know some sort of protected um, competitive advantage. They've got a huge potential market into which to grow, and they've got savvy entrepre entrepreneurial management. Um, who's working for the shareholders. So the next part of, of the fundamental analysis is what's, you know, what what's what's the 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 stock worth? And and so you're looking at it from a valuation standpoint. From a valuation standpoint. And what do we think the stock is worth versus what is the market telling us today that that mm -hmm. the stock is stock is worth through its through its price. And we try to, you know, we try to think long term about this. We're not we're not interested that that, um, you know, the, the company beat its quarterly earnings or or anything like that. We're we're interested in if the long term growth um, elements that 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 we see work out, um, you know, yeah. what what can this produce in, ter in terms of the stock price. So the way we go about this is we, we you know, we take our forecasts for, for sales, for margins, for balance sheet, for capital spending, and so forth. And we think out a couple of years and think of what an average level of earnings would be given the, these various elements. They may, they may not be extant today, they may have to develop to get to get to that point. But this is what this is what's going to produce value in the stock. So we think out a couple years to that. And then we capitalize that using, um, you know, with, with, with our experience, what is the market likely to be be paying in terms of a capitalization rate for those earnings a couple of years? Uh, in the future, given the you know the growth characteristics of the company, the the balance sheet and return and capital return characteristics, what other similar companies with similar characteristics are are selling for in the market, and that that comes up with that produces what we think is 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 a is a fair value. So you so look at you have like a like a mathematical equation that 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 you're plugging everything in to kind of determine what that 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 average you know, you know, three years down the line might look like. Yeah, I, I mean, it. There are elements in this that are similar to the the concept of discount discounted cash flows, and so forth. But we're we're we're. You have to look at it from a sum of the parts. You have to look at it from a discounted cash flow. It is an art. It is not a science. You can have all the mathematical factors, variables in that equation, but if there's no <laughs> relevance to reality, it doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. for us, we have understood that when, for example, this was in 20, 2015, thereabouts, when Bill, you and I, we were discussing about Amazon. At that point in time, Amazon was trading $180. We see a future value of $3,000. And, you know, simply because we were all seeing all the aspects of the business and giving a certain value to the business and say, this can do this, this and do this. And therefore, what is going to be a fair value five, six, ten years from now? Because as you know, we are long-term investors. We use the power of compounding to accelerate 
to emphasize, to empower the return on investments. And then once we have determined what companies to own, then we go to the second part. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me just, let, me, let me just conclude that, that part by saying you, so you, 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 you come up with your, with your fair value, which is not a formula. Shirley's absolutely right. It, it's an art, I think, more than a, more than a science. Um, you, look at, you look at today's price relative to, to the, the fair value. If you don't own the stock, and the, the the stock is well below fair value, then that that's probably a, a pretty attractive candidate. If we own the stock and fair value happens to be quite a bit below the current price of the stock, then you know then you have to recognize that there's some some risk in the stock. And then that's where um, that's where that's where technical analysis can can come in. So surely pick up. And, and I want to talk about that, but but really quickly, I'm just curious, is there a reason because you guys are, are are fundamental first, you know, you're your fundamental investors, but you obviously, and we're going to get into that, utilize technical analysis in your process. But is there a reason that you guys, you know, focus on the fundamentals first versus kind of the other way around? Of course, you don't want technical analysis to be your only first tool. If that's the case, you can be whipsawed and you will lose all your money before the day is over. <laughs> well, let me, let, me, let, 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 me, let, let me go back a step. I mean, we've every, every year we, we do, we do a, um, an analysis of, of all of the stocks that have publicly traded stocks that have a 10 year record of, of, financial statements and we we you know we rank them by by investment performance over that 10 years and there is just an just an incredible um, correlation between long-term growth and long-term stock performance it, it you know you divide it into 10, 10 deciles the top performing decile of stocks have the top decile of growth. The second decile has the second decile of growth. And it go it just perfect symmetry all the way down to the last decile in in growth has the worst has the worst stock performance. So that's you know that's the model we're looking for. And the way you find stocks that work in that in in that framework is is through fundamental analysis, you know, what what is it that's going to position a company to grow its its sales and earnings over the next ten years at consistent rates, and that that are in the top decile of 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 other publicly traded companies? Yeah, that's, that makes sense. you know that's why fundamental analysis to us uh, is is the you know is the starting point. Yeah. Okay. That makes perfect sense. And because you're searching for those specific companies, not necessarily just looking at what's set up on a price chart in, in, in a good position. So, so company first, and like you mentioned earlier, you know, you guys are company first, you know, not necessarily looking at macroeconomic or geopolitical factors that are kind of coming in. You're, you're really bottom up looking at the company first. And so, sorry to cut you off earlier, Shirley, but yeah, I really want to hear, you know, kind of the second part of, 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 of your, your, you know, kind of process. And, and that when the technicals do come into play and how you guys utilize that um, to, to build the portfolio and analyze a company. Sure. I would like to share the charts with you. I will use two example, Microsoft in this case. If you can see it, it is a daily chart. It is 826 days in the past. And this chart is really a reflection of market sentiment at that point in time, which crystallized as the, uh, the price action. And if you notice, it reached its peak here in November 2021. The first peak here is November 2021. And then it dropped down to a low of $200 November, one year later. So if you are a technical trader, you don't know the business itself, you will then sell here and hopefully you will know when to buy. But you see there's all these whipsaws in between. So you better, you have to make all these decisions 
every day. And you better make sure you are right at least 55% of the time. And you better make sure you make more money than you lose the money. Because a lot of traders also practice risk management with stop loss. So if you're not good with trading and risk management, you can lose a bunch of money coming down. Whereas we understood the business, we are long-term investors. We here took some profit off the table right at the first top. And then at the bottom level here, we actually added to our positions, whatever we took profit here, we added to our positions. And now you notice that Microsoft has broken out of its major I'm going to change the weekly chart. You see, Microsoft, this is a weekly chart, and this is over 280 weeks. So Microsoft has now broken up its all-time highs. To us, that's wonderful. It is going to continue forward further. Now, that's what we use charts for. When our position is too large, we took some money off the table near the top. It can never be the top. Because the, you follow the chart and say, oh, it's broken a certain trend line. It's broken a certain support level. Let's take some profits out. And then we are still interested in the company. And now it's much lower than before. Hundred and In fact, $140 lower, which is a third of the value gone. That was in 2022 as the Fed was re hiking interest rate. So what did we do? We want to increase our position in Microsoft again. So we bought more Microsoft near the bottom. When we see the, you see, we calculate the support levels. We calculate the support levels. If you see this entire beautiful trend line, we use Fibonacci numbers and things like this. We use uh, momentum studies. We use positive divergences, negative divergences with the relative strength index indices. So when several of these factors comes together to issue you a buy signal, the probability of success is much higher. And because we really like the company, we are willing now to buy the company at this price because our future fair value is much higher than here. So it gives us the added comfort zone to add to the position at those levels. So, yeah, you're exactly you, you already know from your fundamental perspective that you want to invest in this company. But now on the secondary process, you're utilizing technical analysis to determine and, and, and add confidence to when you actually want to enter or exit a position or add to the position or, or, or offload a little bit. And you're using certain support and resistance areas and, and indicators on, on, on the price chart to help either add confidence or determine those, 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 those timing factors. Is that, is that kind of sum it up for you guys? Yeah, it does. It does. It, it um, you know, it, it can be a, it can be a timing tool. It, it can also be a warning d device if, if it hasn't happened with, with Microsoft, but it's happened with plenty of others that the stock's going up, but it seems to be through some of, some of these technical measures, it seems to be losing momentum and particularly if it were to start to underperform <clears throat> the market, the, the price is still going up, but but it, but relative to the market, it's 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 losing steam. That that for me has always been a really significant warning sign. So you own the stock, you're you know at the very least, if if you were looking to to sell some because your position was too large. That would be, a, you know, that that would be helpful if you own the stock, um, but aren't aren't necessarily thinking about selling. This is the kind of warning signal that tells you you better go back and sort of recheck every, you know, everything on the fundamental side, because the, because the, the the stock is giving you, you know, give giving you a a, a warning signal. Another example. I'll share screen again. Jeff, is Schwab. So if you see Schwab with the, the S Silicon Valley scenario plummeted together, you see the massive drop in there, right? And then it touches low. 
And then that was the first low. We don't know whether it's going to go down further or not. So we observed the chart while monitoring will this financial crisis will balance itself out, will recover. So the first time round, they finally recovered and went to this highs. That get, make us realize that, okay, the danger, the crisis offered by expensive money is over and the mismanagement of duration of Silicon Valley Bank is not widespread. And, and of course, Schwab issued statements to tell you that the exposure, the mismatch of duration is so small. They are not in that category at all, but the market punished them. So from this level, there was a slight, of course, there was another news item that sent it down lower, market sentiment changed and still wasn't sure. And now look at this, the second bottom is now higher than the first bottom and it started to trend up. And if you look at the dark blue line below, you would notice as it plummets down the second time, the bottom of the blue line no longer is as low as before. And in fact, the third time it went spiked down, the third bottom of the blue line is higher. That is what you call a positive divergence. And that helps you to say, hey, I think there is more links to this positive price action. And we indeed bought more Schwab around 55. The low this time round was at $49. So when we see this signal here, we say, okay, which account does not have a full position of Schwab? Let's add to it. And we did. So now at $55, it's now at $71. We look like heroes. <laughs> oh, this, this is a really good example because Schwab, Schwab is a, in our opinion, a blue chip company. It, it, you know, it said it, it, it checks every box, every one of those three boxes in terms of a, a potential long term compounder. But but the price was the, the the price was high. It was well above what we thought fair value was. And then and then the accident was with SVB happens. So um, the stock goes way below what what we um, you know what the fair value is. It comes down. It it you know and it it begins to make what what might look like a a a pretty common bottoming pattern a, a, a double bottom and we and we started to and we started to buy at that point but it wasn't a full position who know knew, knew what was going to happen then the stock runs runs back up pretty pretty quickly um and then it comes down again and makes as as shirley's now describing um a pretty convincing um bottoming pattern so that's you know i i think technical you know we were interested in Schwab for fundamental reasons but 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 the the management of the process of getting involved with the stock really was was very much related to technical analysis no I mean I think it makes perfect sense and I think it's fantastic that that investors kind of look at this and you know see how you know the the, the implementation of, of of both and and you can get the fuller picture on on identifying what companies to be involved with, but then getting that confirmation or timing on when is the right time to actually kind of, um, you know, and, and enter or exit a position. So it's fantastic. It's insightful. I think investors can be, you know, incredibly um, helpful for, for them to kind of, you know, how they're building their own portfolio. But then again, if you don't want to have to deal with it yourself, you can just lean on the, uh, you know, decades long experience of Bill and Shirley over here at Garrison Bradford and and copy their portfolio long-term wealth builders in, in echo trade so bill surely i always love the conversation always kind of come out smarter so i appreciate it and hope you guys have a good rest of good rest of your day and, and have a great weekend happy holidays, happy holidays. Oh, yeah i think it's happy holidays time right absolutely absolutely merry christmas and happy holidays to both of you guys yes thank you take care jeff